studio, I've got uh, brother Brian uh, in the studio with me. Um, Brian, how are you, brother? Uh, good, thanks. You've been in Cairns for a number of years, but like, um, and I suppose people who are out there now listening are saying, Brian Gray, who that, um, who this lad? So like, where are you from, brother? Like, and um, you know, like, tell, tell us a little about your history, sort of, like with. Yeah, I um, I was originally born in a little town called Wanaring in New South Wales. Yep. And um, at the age of four, the, the family service child mob, whoever they was, uh, yep. came and took me and my uh, brother and three sisters from our mother. Mm. And uh, my sisters, they were adopted out to some European families and that. But me and my brother were sent to an orphanage in Rockhampton. Uh, it was an orphanage called St. George's Homes. Yep. And uh, we spent 18 years in there, and it was a very abusive orphanage, as you all know about the inquiries into orphanages and missions now, and yep, yep. all the thing. And and um, so we spent 18 years of a uh, constant abuse in that place, and emotional, mental, and all the stuff, physical abuse. And um, it was very hard, like living a normal life after that. Mm. And the thing about it, we were just put out into the community after being in there for 18 years and uh, apparently they reckon my mother was a, I don't know, alcoholic or something, so yeah. that was the reason, that was their reason, but it wasn't true. So. And uh, we, 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 we left the orphanage when we were 18 and I basically lived on the streets for um, four, four or five years with a lot of street kids. I got caught up in street culture yeah. because we were boxers so we used our our skills on the street to, yeah. to to get our way and, and assert our authority on the street, so, which is, you know, what I regret now, it wasn't a good thing to do, but, well, you that's know, how we, survive, eh? that's how we survived, and and, um, uh, and I ended up, you know, in trouble with the law a lot, finding myself in and out of jail, and doing a lot of time in jail, and um, from there I sort of done a lot of work here and there and, and I, I've been trying to trace all my family ever since then and I've met a lot of them, I've never ever seen my mother so I don't even know what she looks like, I've mm -hmm. met my father, uh, I've never <coughs> ever seen my mother so I don't know what she looks to this day, I don't know what she looks like, she's passed away now while I was in the orphanage mm -hmm. and I wasn't allowed to go to her funeral so I never ever got to see, to yeah. see her even there, they reckon she ought to know me so I, I wasn't allowed to go. So. And um, so that's you know I've had to work through that over the years and and uh, and, I, and, I, and I found I found probably the biggest key that that kept me alive for all that is you know I not only you know I started going to church and things like that and I found the Lord and things like that but uh, another big key that really got me through a lot of stuff was I got an education which I didn't have. I mean, all my years of school, I, I, I learnt nothing except how to be naughty, you know, and bad, you know, yeah. and, and do bad stuff. I hung around the bad, wrong people because, because of the, 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 the orphanage stuff sort of made us angry. Yeah. And um, and when I found out, once I started to go back to get, do studies and do small courses and stuff and, and get an education in it, and that sort of, it brought me out of that that past that I I lived in and it gave me knowledge and it gave me power to to understand a lot of things and how to work through a lot of the hurts a lot of the pain that I was going through to actually understand it why it happened and, and why why I'm feeling like this yeah, yeah. so education was probably a, a big key for me and it got me jobs and stuff and I got more educated and now I've got my qualifications in drug and alcohol now I'm a qualified drug and alcohol worker um, I, I've done, you know, worked for Queensland Health. I've worked for a lot of, you know, uh, health services. Yep. Yeah. Uh, my name is Brian. Um, today I'm just going to be sharing with you a story about how I started my business. So um, we might just get out of this heat and come inside and meet the family. Come in. Hey. Hey. Beautiful house. Yeah, not bad. 
Katrina, that's my wife, Ricky. Hey. How you going? Hey. How are you? Good, thank you. My son, Joshua. Hey, hey Josh. Come and have a cuppa. Would you like a cuppa? Oh, hello. And Dad, Dad love that one, and I love that small cup. Hey, hey, baby. Hello, I'm gonna... Where you come hey, from? Katrina, nice to meet you. Uh, when I left school, I went out to work as a stockman out in the, out at Blackwater for about six months, and after that, I went and worked on the railway. I decided then that I didn't want to be in the sun working anymore so I started getting education and I'm starting to train myself up in education and going getting some training, doing some courses here and there to advance myself because I knew I had no education to get a, the job that I wanted to get. So all of those experiences, how did they affect yeah. your you know, confidence about starting a business? It built my character really and it really puts things in me that are really benefited me now in my business and for where I am now it's really helped me to be strong and you know, I use a lot of those experience and that knowledge that I've learned from working in the industry and it helps me in my business now to stay focused and, and be strong in my mind and my spirit and, and stay on track with what I'm doing. Tell me about why you wanted to start this business. Well one of the reasons that this whole thing got the ground is really came from the inspiration of this fellow here. His dream is what he wants to be and it sort of inspired me to to help him with his dream and as a boxer. Start really living my dream, you know, you gotta take step by step and yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm proud of my dad. I'd like a job. Hey, you've been writing a business plan, right? Is that being hard? That's the that, that, that's that's the the, the the I wouldn't say the bad side but it's Probably a real important part, but that's the hardest part, I think. It's it's managing what you got, you know what I mean? You can have a dream, you can have a vision, you can have this big goal, but you got to have structure, and you got to have put structure around it, and you got to have some something that's going to manage that dream, and, and a business plan is the way that I see it's managing and it's put it into something so it, it, it's it's you can follow it. It's like a, a park and follow it, and all that paper. I'm not used to that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not a paper mm -hmm. person. It puts things in more perspective. How do you plan to get customers? Pamphlets and posters and that that I'm starting to now promote the, the business. Before it was more of a Murray Grapevine thing, but now I've realised that you know your business looks bigger on a pamphlet or on a billboard. Your business looks bigger, you know. So, and it's starting to get grow a little bit now because I've got pamphlets now and I'm starting to advertise it a bit, which I wasn't doing before. So that's moved us ahead a bit. Got some work out of it now. So you've been doing some budgeting. Mm, <laughs> budgeting, Josh. <laughs> um, me and budgeting don't mix. And I find it very hard to budget. And I find it very hard and difficult to separate business money from personal family money. My wife agrees too. Yeah. Ryan's not very, he's not, he's not skilled in, in the budgeting area, I can tell you. He needs you. you. Know, he yeah, you. thinks he's that rich budget. man when it's there. I thought business was all about making money, which it is, but then I didn't realise that there's costs. Tax is another thing I didn't realise. They sting you with tax. I suppose you don't get it coming in all the time, you know. And then when you get, when you finally do get a chance to have a bit of money, you know, all you want to do is spend. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I got no money in my pocket, so sometimes it's, it, it's a, you, you've just got to give them a loan because of the, the, the nature of the need. Just to shut us up. Just to shut them up, really. <laughs> Especially her. <laughs> well, I'm trying to set, I'm, I'm trying to set Brian's office up in our room, you know, put money aside so we can buy. You know, ink for the printer and, you know, st stuff and that, what Too he busy needs, giving diaries loads, and got whatever. Ink, yeah. How are you feeling at this stage about starting a business? Ah, oh, little deadly. The more Murray's in the business, I reckon, the better. I, I believe it's the way forward for our people is to, to get into business. That's, that's the way forward. You know, I say go, go forward. Well, I believe the way for our people to move forward is stop relying on government and start getting a business and start moving ahead and, and taking control of our own destiny and our own own lives and our own financial future instead of relying on government. Yeah. <laughs>
I don't even start preaching then to just come on me there. So now we're going to go to my office and we're going to look at where I work from and all the paperwork and all the, the, the um, frustrating stuff happens. Now, so just come with me and we'll um, have a look. Uh, just come in here. And we'll just, um, my seat. And we'll sit down here. As you can see, this is where I got my computer. Where I do all my emailing from and my uh, fax machine here where I get my fax and send all my invoices through and receive information. And a couple of my trophies belong to my son. And um, yeah, got my filing cabinet over here and some other filing cabinets here. Bit of stuff down there. But uh, the most was done on this computer and this is where I run everything from. Good morning. Today I just go on in to do some uh, some mantle training with my mantle in at the uh, learning workshop. I'm gonna go through some ABN stuff and some some a uh, lot of the legal side of the business where I need to um make sure I got everything you know down right. Lucky I got this car because without a car you sort of you got no way of getting around. You know you need to get to your appointments. You need to get to you know to meet your clients. Otherwise, be foot falcon. <laughs> Please, I love one. Yeah, thanks. Here she is. Hello. Hey, which way? How are you going? What's yeah, up good. to? Oh, not much. You're good looking a bit puffed up there. What, you been into Zumba or something? Uh, good girl. <laughs> I've been working out. Jim? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, you ready to get Make down to science. business? that offered you work, you need to call them and follow it up. Okay, you I'm bugging again. I'm these Well, you're going to have to do it because... Oh, how much time? No, that's how, that's how you're going to get the business. True. Okay. I'm bugging. Oh, hello. Yeah. It's uh, Brian here from the um, NBF Boxing Club. How are you? Yeah, I sent a quote to you uh, regarding a, 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 a um, job with your followers there. I'm doing a follow-up on see what's happening with it. Oh, Brian. Uh, all right, hang on a second, mate. Hey, Dave, it's that Brian guy again. He keeps calling us up about this boxing. What do you reckon? What? I just gave him the job. Hey, Brian, you've got the job. No worries. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I'll get that through to you straight away. Okay, thank you. Got the job. Yoo-hoo! See? I told you you want to listen, eh? Yeah, true. Yeah. Oh, you right there, butter? Oh. A cup of tea here? Yeah, tea or coffee? Coffee, then. Oh, that's coffee there. It's strong. Mmm, I need it. Mean strong coffee. <coughs> oh. Tell me, what, what, what's it like for you to be a mentor? 
maybe one day I might want to be a mantle. What's it like for you? Um, well, it's it's. I find it satisfying yeah. being a mentor uh, because it it means that I'm playing a part in, in helping people to reach their goals. Yeah. So mentoring is basically just helping people step by step in the processes of trying to reach their goals and their potentials. So if someone was looking for a mentor, where would you recommend someone to, to go and look, find a mentor for, for their business? First place to start is in your own community mm -hmm. and um, have a look around and I'm sure there's, you know, there's heaps of people around that got the um, experience as a mentor mm -hmm. and in particular with businesses. Um, it, and they don't have to be an indigenous person. Mm -hmm. It can be, you know, a non-indigenous organisation or an individual. And um, mm -hmm. also, you know, maybe down the track sometime, there might be other individuals that will be looking for a ment uh, yeah. mentor. I'll be able to say, go and see Brian. Mm -hmm. he's, he's started his new business. He can help you out. He's got that experience. He knows what it's like to struggle. Mm. And to get to certain points, so he's a good fellow to talk to. That will explore. Oh. So um, how he got from A to B. Mm. So um, you'll be a mentor too. You probably already are. Mm. Hi Brian, welcome. Hello, good. Um, want to talk a bit about your business today? Um, so how did you feel about that paperwork aspect of the business? Stressing. Yeah, but I feel that I can manage it now. Okay. Yeah, I know I can I can manage it now, even though I don't like it. I know I've got to do it, but, but I, I have the skills and the knowledge now how to do it. So that's how it came because I've got some mastery. Mm -hmm. Okay. What sort of areas did you find the most difficult um, in terms of getting your business started, other than the paperwork? Yeah, I found follow up customers and clients and stuff like that very humbugging people, you know, for, for service. And I found that very shameful, because I don't like humbugging people. And, um, but I found that since I have been doing it, it I've become stronger in that area. And I, and I can start to see the benefits of actually doing that, because you won't get anywhere if you don't. So you are learning as you start your small, small business. Can you name some of the skills that you've, you're talking a lot about your personal experiences. What about what are some of the skills that you've learnt uh, since you started the business? I've learnt um, emailing, uh, writing proposals up. Uh, I've done my budgets. For, there's three monthly budgets. Um, I've done a business plan. A business plan done. It's nearly finalised my business plan. So you've been going three months now. Have you had to give one message to Indigenous people at this early stage when you're starting a business? What message would you give them? Don't give up. Just believe in what you're doing. And I always say, yes, we can. We can do it. So can you. Just got to believe in yourself and just keep going. If you get knocked down, just get back up and go again. Yeah. Never give up. Okay, today we're going to go shopping at Amart and we're going to look at some gear, some boxing gear for the gym. So, and I'm pretty excited about this. So, come and watch, and we'll see what we can get in here. Here we are shopping. Morning. How are you going? Yeah, good. Yeah, welcome to Model Sports. Yeah, thank you. How uh, can we help today? I just come in to buy, get look for some equipment for my new business I just started. Oh yeah, what sort just of business? Uh, it's a boxing fitness business. Oh beautiful. Come on in, I'll show you some of our gear. Yeah, good. What were you looking at first, getting? Oh, uh, we might as well look at some punching bags. First. Punching bags, definitely. Yeah, just over bag. this way. So we got uh, some here yeah. and all along here. So yeah, this is probably the best one for you. Oh sorry, what was your name again? Uh, Brian. Oh Brian, yeah. Carlos Brian. We'll go with this fella yeah, here, eh? Good. All right. Oh, there's a chopping trolley here as well. Okay. So how many would you like? Just two, eh? Two? Three Perfect. Two All righty. All right, so what else would you like today? Uh, 
<laughs> it's fun, wasn't it? <laughs> so that's oh, it for today then? That's plenty, that should do me for now. That's just start me off, get me going. Perfect. That's, um, I'll probably be back later on down the track to um, probably get some get more Get some stuff. more goods. Yeah, definitely. Look, we can always um, help out with pricing as well because you're coming yeah. back. Um, I'll just grab some details off you. Um, and what was your contact phone number, Brian? Uh, 044 Perfect. Yeah, we'll definitely look at doing prices for you. I just have to ask the manager. Yeah. I'll give you a call and everything. Cool. We'll go from there. All right, let's process it all. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's Carlos from Blood All Sports. Carlos, how you doing? Yeah, I was just talking to the boss, um, and he said, yeah, we can definitely do some great deals for you. Yeah, no worries. Okay, yeah, thanks for that, mate. Yeah, we'll catch you soon. Perfect. All right, buddy, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, okay bye. bye. Um, today I'm over in Yarrabah, uh, we're at the Gurney Health Service and I have an interview here today with some, some clients so I might be able to get some work out of them. I've come prepared, I've got my, got my uh, paperwork, my, my pamphlets and all my timesheets and, uh, and stuff so uh, we'll just go on in here and see how we go and we'll have a talk with these, the Gurney Health Service and see if we can get some work. Good morning, how are you? Yeah, hi. I'm, I'm Brian. I'm in for an interview with the boxing club for a job here. Yep, no worries. I'll just go get them for yeah, you. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Brian from the Natural Born Fighters Boxing Club. Uh, good yeah. to meet you, Brian. I'm Darren. Darren, good. Um, and this is Lucretia. Hello. Nice to meet you, Lucretia. You too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, mm -hmm. We're really interested in what natural born fighters got to offer our um, community. We can uh, go and sit in a meeting and have a yarn. Yeah, no worries. After you. Come on, Brian, take yeah. a seat over there. Right, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, um, Mr. Patricia and Darren. Brian, I just got one question. Um, have you worked in um, other Aboriginal communities before? Yes, I have. I've, I've worked in Arakoon and um, Mornington Island and, and PCYC here in Yarraba. We did a bit of research before you came out and um, checked out your brochure. I think it's really impressive. Brian, what we would really like to know is um, what uh, benefits uh, Girani and Yarraba are going to expect um, from the Natural Born Fighters Program. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is uh, specifically for Yarraba. I've already um, I've already met with a number of major stakeholders in here in the community, councils and parents, and um, the youth of Yarraba, just to get a feel of you know what the community wants out here. That's great to hear. You, you spoke to um, really important people. Yep. How did everyone respond? Uh, the feedback was really really positive. Um, everyone agrees that, that there's a need for my program out here. This proposal looks great, Brian. Before we commit, Brian, uh, you mentioned earlier you did some work in Arakun. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like you to give us some uh, feedback in, in terms of the positive outcomes from that program you run there. Oh, okay. Um, sure. I've put together some short reports on the program for both of you to look at. Uh, this one for you. Yeah. Keeping in mind that they are similar programs, but two very different communities, yours and Erica. Listen to this, some of this feedback. Natural born fighters has kept me off the streets. And I really like this one. Because of natural born fighters, I feel fit, strong, proud, black and deadly. That's good feedback, right? Excellent. Yeah, we're really excited about this one. Can you provide us with a um, 
quote. Yeah, the um, quotes in the in the in the proposal I I gave you, and um, I've made it as cost effective as possible, uh, making the use of the great equipment you have here at Gurney. It will be deadly to see the the equipment here get used. Well, Brian. We've been really impressed and how thorough and professional you are. Brian, I just want to say, like, just looking at your proposal, yeah. I'm impressed with it. Mm -hmm. um, you looked a bit more organised than, than others that have come here and asked us about an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say, um, we'd like to give you the contract yeah. and um, yeah. we want to sit with you next week sometime and work out a starting date, eh? Good, it's okay with good. you? Too. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. can't wait for it to Thanks. happen. Yeah. 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 No worries. Been a yeah. pleasure. Real excited. Yeah, no, thanks for coming out. Mm. Okay, thanks. See you later. See you later. Okay, bye. Too deadly. Good afternoon, that's Brian Fighters, Brian speaking. Brian? Look, I've got an appointment that I forgot about and I have to go to that appointment. It's a doctor's appointment. I need to go there. Come on, you know I'm at work. I just can't get up and leave. Look, Brian, you just have to take some responsibility too. If, he, if I don't turn up there, he's going to be worried. Come on, I can't do everything. Oh, look, okay. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm on my way. All right. this mess over. I don't know whether I'm coming or going with this business anymore. I think it's time to throw in the towel. What do you reckon? Well, Brian Gray, never in all my life have I ever thought of you being a quitter. Now, what's the name of this business again? Natural Born Fighters. Exactly. Now, who's the most natural born fighter that I know? I don't know. Who? Brian Gray. Who else? What, you gotta let a little bit of paperwork get you down, are you? It's not the paperwork. Else it's everything outside the business. My friends, the family, you know, it's all getting too much for me. I can't keep up with it all. Look, it's all about boundaries, Brian. You have to be untouchable during work hours. You can't be taking phone calls from family demanding this and that and going here and there and all over the countryside. That's not good for business. Would you like me to have a talk to them? That would be a huge help, thanks, because cause lately I feel like friends and family don't even hear what I'm saying. No worries. Look, consider it done, okay? Now, this paperwork, we need to get stuck into this here. I broke down. Can you come and help me out? Oh, look, sorry. I won't be able to do anything until after half past four. Come on, Dad. I really need your help. I broke down. Look, I really need your support here to run this business. So see you at 4.30, OK? OK, Dad. That's OK. I forgot about your business. I'll call somebody else. See you later. Love you. Bye. OK, love you. Bye. Like sometimes you, you just get a, a dream and and you run with it and then you don't realise there's all this paper trail that's come behind you and all this legal stuff and all this liability stuff and managing the books and managing the paperwork and all that stuff that come with it. 
and it was the mentoring was uh, a good way of uh, making me aware of that stuff in the business and helping me equip me and train me and prepare me for those things so that you know I can manage the business as a whole and not just get so caught up in the dream. So how did you feel about that paperwork aspect of the business? No, oh, I don't like it. Do you feel a bit more capable of managing it now? Yeah, but I feel that I can manage it now. Okay. Yeah, I know I can, I can manage it now, even though I don't like it. I know I've got to do it, but, but I, I have the skills and the knowledge now how to do it. Okay, so you would have got your first pay just before Christmas. How did that feel? Oh, I felt deadly getting that. Um, we all feel deadly when we get our pay. You know, this was my first pay, so I felt even deadlier. <laughs> and, um, but, uh, yeah, but then I realised there was some bills you had to pay and some expenses that the business needs to, to keep operating and running. I need to, have to pay bills, and registrations and, and, and fees and stuff like that for the club and for the business as well. So, even though it was deadly coming in, it went out quick as deadly as it came in too, so some went to the business, some went to me, some went to the family, and mainly for family things as we're moving, stuff like that. So, family asks you for loan all the time, so some went to them. So it's just all part of business. I didn't like it, but I'm getting used to it. Yeah, welcome back there. Yeah, hopefully everybody feeling deadly today on Country. Like I said, it is Friday, last day of the working week. Here in Cairns, we've got beautiful weather, and I suppose over the rest of the state and country, it is deadly too. I'm uh, talking here in the studio. I've got uh, Brother Brian uh, in the studio with me. Um, Brian, how are you, Brother? Uh, good, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Good to be here. <laughs> That's deadly. Hey, Brother, like, um, you just started a business, okay, because um, it's called Natural Born Fighters. Yeah. How, how, how important is it for you like to be working? I'm, I'm doing something that I, I feel fulfilled in mm. and it's something that I'm seeing results in as well. I'm seeing people starting to live healthy. I'm seeing, you know, I've got young fellas who actually compete in boxing now and girls as well. And I'm seeing good outcomes and stuff. So it's something that I really enjoy doing because I, I like to be fit all the time and I like to see other people be fit and healthy as well. With you now, with your vision, like, what was your initial vision? Uh, to uh, set up and deliver f health and fitness programs to young indigenous people. The main people that I was targeting there, and pro I still am, is, is, is that a lot of our people are overweight, and, and, and a lot of them have diabetes and chronic illnesses that mm. affect a lot of our people today. And I still target and, and look for those people who, who want to reduce weight and live a more healthy lifestyle. So what, what sort of lessons that you've learned since um, starting, I suppose, Natural Born Fighters? Uh, probably one of the biggest lessons I learned was um, that no matter what you do in life, you, you always need help, yeah. you, you need support, and um, I mean, you can take things so far and do it on your own for so far, but there's going to come a stage and a time when you need some sort of uh, support systems around you, like mentors and, and trainers and, and people who have expertise in other areas that you, you lack. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and because I was just about to give everything up and, and the whole business thing was just, you know, it's going to collapse. Business and not for Blackfoot. Blackfoot and business and me just don't mix. So I was just going to chuck it all away. And, and I got this help now. So, And it's made me strong and I've learned a lot of lessons through it. I'm still learning as I go along because I'm only just still in my first year of, of doing the business. Probably eight, nine months now. Like business now. <laughs> it, it, like a lot of time our mob get into business and it stresses us out. You know, like so yeah. if you're gonna you are you probably thinking about going in business, that stress you yeah. out straight away. True. But <laughs> <laughs> now that you're in business I suppose, you know, there's things like that now that stress you out. Like and like how how do you manage manage that? Probably a lot of the things that stress me out in running a business, I'm not a paperwork person. 
Mm. I'm more of a, you know, get out there and do things, stuff. And, and when I first started a business and got the support and the mentor and that, they brought me right back to this paperwork stuff yeah, yeah. and how to manage money. Because, you know, Murray going to give money away too much, you know. Too much family. Yeah, family come on. Mate. Oh, yeah, <laughs> take the seal. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you get a good job, you got a good contract, and, and you oh, they're there straight away looking for... You know, loan. When you were in business, you get more relations than you ever had. Yeah, eh? true. <laughs> they all, because <laughs> I think, oh, you're yeah. in business now, you can mm-hmm. make more money, eh? <laughs> they think you've got a lot of money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, and, I, and I suppose, and, and that's the thing. And if you're in a relationship too, there's that side of it as well. So, like, yeah, like, like with business as well, you got to put a marketing plan in place. You've got some marketing strategies that are happening as well. Like in the yep. near future, you got some stuff happening. Yeah, at the at the moment we look look we got these shirts now we've just got done there so that's going to help market some so those shirts will be worn at tournaments that we put on and yeah, stuff yeah. and around the gym and stuff people wear them around town we've got pamphlets made up that yeah. uh, I give out to organisations yeah. and and you know, remote community people and that and uh, we've got some posters that we put up around the place and. Uh, Oh, we do a lot of networks. We send that um, stuff to on the Department of Communities and a lot of the local Indigenous organisations through through email and internet and stuff like that. So, so yeah, pretty busy. It's all out there now. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true, brother. Brian, thanks for being on the show, brother. We got all your pamphlets here and stuff. So, if anybody want to call and get more information, they can give us a call. As I say, Garu, Galing, see you next time. Have a good weekend and stay strong and stay deadly for your mob. Eh? Bye bye. That's it. See ya. Focus on controlling their punches a bit more instead of all the volume punching stuff. I think, you know, the stress is going to come, the hardships are going to come. But, you know, I think if you stay focused and what you're doing and you believe what you're doing is a good thing, you know, I think you can achieve that. So probably finance is probably the biggest issue that I'm faced with and time is probably another one making the time between family and um, my, my gym here and my family responsibilities so plays a big part on you know, how successful I'm going to be and this is a big achievement for him you know he should be very proud of himself I'm proud of him and hope he gets it. I told my life where I've had enough, I've had that much education, that much training, and how much training we want, and there's time now to, you know, to take ownership now and, and start my own thing. And, and I feel this is the way forward for Indigenous people is to, to you know, start, start their own businesses and, and take control of their own financial future. Take a deep breath, deepen my pride, gather my strength, put it in my stride. Put all my worries aside. Just the
bye.